Hello, Inspired Goddess Community. This is Tyra Omi Lade. I am so excited to bring to you all today something that I love doing. I've done this for years, even though there have been a few that I've skipped, like last year. But I love putting together wisdom to for the community to help you to have a guiding light. That's what I see wisdom as. And so this year I went through and did several oracle readings, and this will complement all of the astrology that I put inside of the YouTube membership. So first and foremost, thank you for being a part of my YouTube membership. I'm just so excited <laughs> to see you all here. And um, thank you all so much for, um, yeah, just being a part of the community and I love sharing about wisdom, astrology. I love sharing to help you walk more empowered, to help you be more enlightened and, you know, just be more in control of your life. And so it's almost like, to what avail do I share it if no one's listening? And so y'all have chosen to listen yeah. oh, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And so um, this guide stands alone. You'll see me offering it to the community, but what they're not going to get is this video unless they join the YouTube membership. Um, but I did want to take the time to go over it. Even as I was typing it, I was like, oh, wow, I can see how this will align with the astrology. And it's just easier for me to speak it because yeah, it'll just get too complicated if I try to just type it all up. So where you're going to be able to access this guide is via my portal where I put all of just anything that I typically have for people to download. It will be there. And so you'll have to, if you haven't logged into my website before, you'll have to create a login and then you can, um, it'll just be downloadable once you log in. Okay. So planning your year with the oracles. One thing I do want to say is Everything that I share in here, you can use this to help you to understand how to plan your year because the year is, is, is about achievement. It's about setting goals, but there's like a tone that sometimes we have to deal with. And so sometimes, you know, a lot of times, not sometimes, a lot of times I'm giving you the astrological tone. And the way I see it is it helps me to understand how I need to show up and, and be. It, it helps me to understand how I need to act. It may help me to actually understand how I need to change so that I can adjust to whatever is, is happening with, you know, so that I can manifest. Or sometimes it's not even about manifestation. It's just how do I want to show up in life? I think that the day-to-day -day operations of life, the routines, just the, the goings and the comings. And then there's all of the stress that we experience, you know, the news cycles or just the things that are going on in our personal lives. We can literally get lost in those details. And I just see that as life just being very myopic or our vision of life being very myopic. And so oracles and wisdom help us. Sometimes we we stay myopic, but it'll help us to kind of just like take one little bitty step at a time because some life sometimes life is just that myopic that you can't see very far ahead. You, you don't have the capacity, you do not have the wherewithal to do that, but that doesn't mean that the oracle can't help you to at least sometimes I see it as a buoy and then other times it's just like, okay, just how do I experience this moment? Okay. So I want you to see it that way. But sometimes it's just that we've got mired down in the details and the, the oracles help us to open up so that we can see more possibility, more opportunity. And so you can use this guide however you want. But that's what I want y'all to understand is that the oracles truly guide. That is one of the reasons why I call myself a guide. These help to guide you, but you get to decide how, because you 
are a sovereign, powerful woman. And so you want to use this in a way that works best for you, that fits whatever is going on for you. You can use these um, this reading for the entire year. And for some, it may be a year where your focus is more personal growth and development, spiritual evolution. Sometimes it's just downright healing. I've been through that in the recent years where it's just like I'm doing a lot of crying and I'm making peace with some things. It's very internal. Some of us may be more outwardly focused. We may be more focused on our relationships, be it love or family, uh, just finding friends or you know relationships with our friends. Uh, some of it may be about career or uh, you know learning new things. Uh, some of it may be about us uh, starting something brand spanking new. You know who knows? We're all doing different things based on our own uh, soul evolution, destiny, purpose, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and so you can use this all year long, all year long. And it can give you like the tone of the year. Maybe you use it sometimes specifically as this is how I am going to show up this year from start to finish. Um, I recommend that you revisit it, you know, in and out all year long. The new moon is always a great time. New moon or full moon, because those are typically two moons that people pay attention to. This would be a good time to revisit the guide. And maybe you just pull one thing at that time that you want to focus on, okay? You can look at it as much or as little. You can't look at it too much, okay? That is for sure. Okay, so, but you can also use it to kind of help you to, you know, accept what it is you want to focus on this year. Okay, so what I start off with is asking you to review the past 12 months, very important to do that, to take stock in what you have been focused on in the last um, year. I tell you, when I start writing down and, you know, maybe you need to go look at your calendar, your social media, when I really start looking at what the previous year, or, you know, what, the, yeah, what the previous year has held for me, it's awe-inspiring a lot of times. It's so easy to think that we haven't achieved. Or, you know, we're so lost in the details of this moment that we've forgotten, you know, maybe some of the good things that have happened to us. We have forgotten how we have overcome some of the challenges of the year. So make sure you do that. But also something else that I want you to think about is the wisdom that you got last year, maybe some of the wisdom in the YouTube channel, something really hit you and you're like, okay, I'm going to use that wisdom. You want to look to see how did the wisdom help you? How did it guide you? Any readings that you did for yourself or someone did for you, how did it play out for you? This is one of the ways that I keep myself moving forward and you know, going in the direction that I want my life to go in is by always looking back, but also looking at how did the wisdom unfold. And so you'll be doing the same thing at the end of 2024. So Make sure you do that. So you're going to go ahead and do that. And so then I start going into the oracles. Now, I'm using oracles that people may not be familiar with. Say, for instance, the energy that spoke is Amen and Arsair. And using my Metunetter, this is the name of the oracle deck. None of that matters if you don't understand it. It does not matter. The only thing that matters is what, when you read the words, they, they make sense. So for Amen and Orsair, this is what it means. I have two pages of what Orsair and Amen mean. Essentially with these two, this actually is going to be more of a spiritual year than I realized because astrology, I mean, excuse me, in numerology, it is an eight year and eight is about success. And it's it's a year of achievement and material gain. It's very much Western, you know, the things that we think about in Western culture. But this one is asking us to be more spiritual, to be more connected to spirit. And I want you to understand from Amen and Oisir, 
the more you engage your spiritual practice, to a certain degree, the more you be instead of do, the better. And also the more you stand in your authenticity, the better. So this is a year where it's it's really kind of asking you to offload labels and limiting beliefs and decisions. It's asking you to transcend all of that. So to that end, a lot of us will be experiencing things that are asking us to release whatever it is that we previously believed or however we have been previously operated and to to really just trust spirit, to be in tune with the, the great divine energy by whatever name you call it, and to be in touch with that energy. And it's like a communing of it. I will say Orsair, this is Orsair negative. Uh, people know this name by Osiris. So if you want to look up Osiris, that might help you. Amen is the name of the supreme deity in that came out of ancient Egypt. But or Sarah Negative is saying that a lot of us may struggle with that, that we may feel a little bit compromised. We may not want to actually rock the boat or, you know, we may try to keep the peace by trying to be something maybe that we're not. But Orsair is about being aligned with your ultimate truth and operating from that at all times, no matter what. And I think that, you know, in a way, it's kind of like we've given up so much in the last few years. Why not just show up and be who we came here to be, you know? What I will say is that this energy confers a lot of peace. And... Um, it, it is this energy of being and being guided and being in tune with, you know, the, the your inner wisdom. It's about trusting the wisdom of the universe and then allowing the power of the universe to be what moves you. It's kind of like, um, you know, sometimes we hear people say things like, God is my co-pilot. It's, it's like that, you know, it's like, to a, to a certain degree, it you know it, it actually is so interesting because we are in an eight year, but it's kind of like the achievement that we get will come from largely working with the laws of manifestation, which have to do with and and you'll see something that I'm going to um, show you that that came from the mythical goddess tarot deck. It's like what is the desire of your heart? And to just be connected to that. And there's this trust in the, the wisdom of the universe and the power of the universe that will be what leads and guides you to manifesting that. It's actually a year to be sort of feminine. And, you know, I'm all about the femininity. But it's it's really asking for us to lean more into intuition and flow and ease versus work, 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 which is often associated with an eight year. So you do not switch to eight being your personal, like a part of your personal numerology until your birthday arrives in 2024. So people starting in January birthdays, they will be under eight influence um, maybe I shouldn't have even brought that up, but anywho, the whole uh, collectively will be under an eight. So I'm just going to do it that way. I can talk about numerology in a different video where I can help you to understand how to make it specific to you. Um, but collectively we're all under an eight. And so it's really just sort of like, you know, there used to be this old way of doing things, this hyper-masculine way that's gone. So we have to learn a new way of being materially and success oriented that is more spiritual and more feminine. That's how I see this particular um, year with, based on this reading. And so um, hypnosis, meditation, NLP, all things spiritual, being quiet, that's something else that's really important at this time. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and then I put here, live the universal law that all is one. And what I mean by that is amen. When we speak to this energy, amen. Amen is 
the universal energy. It is the oneness of all of creation that all of creation comes from that oneness. And so when Amen speaks, it's really a time to, it's not a us versus them. It's a every every person, everything, you know, it could be oracle decks, whatever, uh, candles, tree, sky, everything extends from this one energy. And it seems like we're all different because we're in this physical realm. But Amen says that it's important for you to see the oneness in all. And Orsayer says, you know, you want to look for unity, which means that we might be complementary. We're not going to all be the same, although we are all from just this one universal energy. And so we're all complements. But I want you to understand that peace comes from, and I have gotten peace this way, I'm telling y'all. Sometimes when we see the people who get on our nerves the most, if we can see beyond what we see in the physical and see the truth of who and what they are, which we're just all souls incarnated into bodies, we're honestly doing the best we can given the resources that we have. This is truly like a universal love and peace type of energy. And there is nothing like right now, especially here in the United States, that requires, if we want that peace, that requires this energy. I honestly believe more harmony and um, peace and just all around goodness for everybody will come with applying this universal law that all is one. It's very challenging. You can just toss it out if you don't want to use it. But that's what this asks you to do. Live the universal law that all is one. Can you see the oneness in everything? It's very spiritual and etheric, but it confers peace if that's what um, you are looking for. Ah, let's see here. Yes, mindfulness, meditation, and lots of quiet time are very important this year. Regularly unplug from the outside world so that you can tune into your inner world. Let go and let God, that's how we typically hear it, but let go and let the universe, how much can you just trust? That is a, is a major part of this energy. But it is going to feel challenging for some of us. But don't judge yourself for that. It's just part of the process, okay? Um, I thought it was interesting that neither of these two energies have a color. So wear colors that allow you to open up to clarity. Oh, wow, I think I found something. Oh, okay. Um, and so it's interesting. Some of, One of the colors that I pulled later on is crystal. And I thought, okay, that is perfect for this. It was like all the oracles kind of like, that. there was something about them that really connected. Okay, so this is another one from my um, African um, oracle. So Oduogunda and ED or OD, if you don't understand those words, don't worry about it. Um, but Ogunda, now this is interesting. This is a warrior energy. So here are some of the, you know, the, the fight that we will have, you know, uh, over this year, this is some of the action that we'll want to take this year. Cause it's the same as Mars and Aries. So I love this because we have something special going on in Aries right now. It's like a new beginning in Aries. And so I think that this is speaking to whatever this new beginning that we're supposed to be focused on. And if you're here, then all you need to do is go back and look at the um, the the last eclipse. And I'll, I'll, I'll link that into the description of this video. But you want to go back and look at that eclipse class. The last one that I did, we had an eclipse in Aries and we had one in Libra. That was probably, yeah, I'll, I'll find it for you and I'll link it in this video. Um, so that way you'll know what area of life is this happening in. There's some new direction that we're going in. 
and it's all about Aries. Now, this one is asking you to have courage. This one is asking you to take action. So yeah, you know, Amen and Oyser is this really woo-woo, not woo-woo. I don't like that anymore. This is very spiritual and um, it's very internal energy. And it's not about doing anything. It's about being versus Ogunda, which is like, hey, let's take some action. So it's like, you've got to find that balance between the two because we don't want to be sitting around all of 2024. We're going to have to take some action too, right? So this will give you action. But the guiding principle is that I love about this is abundance can be found at home. Any struggle which pulls the person who receives this do a do away from home is pulling them away from their destiny. And what I say is home is whatever is important to you. It could be your family. It could be the actual place that you live. But I also see home as when it comes to work, what are you responsible for? That's home at work. It could be your body temple. It's whatever is for you, about you, your life, all those different areas. Maybe it's certain relationships that you want to focus on. That's home for you right now. You know, could be you're working on an education or a business or even your hobby is your home, you know, having some fun and being creative because there's a lot here about have joy and be creative. So what is home for you? Focus on that because your destiny depends on it. All right. So I love that. Even though this is a very masculine energy, its guiding principle is abundance is found at home. All right. So that is Ogunda. And then ED is something about completion. And so what I put here is ED largely matches the wisdom and astrology that says that certain things must be completed in 2024 before you're able to move on with the new. So what is it that you need to complete that you, it's like, you just keep saying, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. And it's not getting done. Get some support if you need some support. But ED is always, always, always about an ending. It's about completing something. And it could be too, you know, maybe the first half of 2024, you're going to be completing something and then you'll jump into something new in the second half of 2024. Um, it also says um, avoid complacency. And um, oh, this is one of my favorite questions for ED. What do you need to put a seal on and never return to? That is something that I would definitely focus on in 2024. Okay, so the mythical goddess tarot deck, I pulled the four of seas, which has to do with desire, the two of earth, which has to do with cycles, and the two of seas, which has to do with love. And I just thought it's so interesting that... Those numbers match the numbers, of course, minus zero, but there's no zero in tarot. Uh, that they, they match the um the the numbers of 2024. Is there a zero in tarot? I'm actually I don't know a lot about tarot, but I, I love this deck. I just need to see this before I because some of y'all are no tarot, and y'all would be like, Yes, there is a zero. Okay, there is a zero, it's the fool. Okay, so there we go. So minus zero. The the numbers from the mythical goddess tarot deck are, I was like, wow, this is crazy. I pulled those numbers here. So this desire card is the one that is all about, you know, tapping into your desire, um, trusting your intuition and um, stepping into your power. And, and, you know, a lot of us have to understand that when you have a desire, that's an indication of where you need to head next. Okay. So that's a good thing, right? So um, yeah, tap into your own desires. And also you need to honor your emotions because this card is connected with moon in cancer. All right. So again, speaking to trusting your gut and honoring your emotions, you know, sometimes we talk about 
emotions and feelings are they the same thing? I think that there's a fine line that separates the two. Whatever it feels like for you in that moment, trust it. You know, maybe you need to trust an emotion because it's gonna. You need to release it and let it go. It's stuck and it needs to come out so that you're free and clear. Or sometimes it's going to be more of like a feeling and it's guiding you like, oh, this don't feel right. We really need to get more into that. All right. We need to make that more a, a natural, normal part of how we operate, especially as feminine beings. OK. Um, another thing about this is being receptive. A lot of times we say we want something, but then we are not receptive to actually receive it. So that's something else I want you to think about. This two of earth card has to do with cycles. And so, you know, we talk a lot about cycles here in this membership. So you want to keep up with what what cycle are you in? What is the focus of that particular cycle? But in particular, I like to tell people we need to be focused on, like when it's time to let something go, we need to release it and let it go. Because this card is saying certain things that we're holding on to might keep us from actually moving forward from, you know, being that Ogunda energy, taking action. And, um, you know, this is really and truly sort of like that Amen energy too, this overarching energy of just let it go and just be open. So that will help um, also. And then the last one is the two of C's card. So very feminine again, very feminine. Um, so the two of C's card is all about surrendering the ego. And it's really just about ego constructs. You know, a lot of times we give ego a bad reputation, but who are we without an ego? All right. An ego is a construct. So we just want to release any egoic constructs, which are just uh, maybe beliefs, limiting decisions that we have. We want to release any of those that don't allow us to have the relationships that we want. Some of it might be love. Some of it might be family. Some of it might be just friendships, okay? So um, I love that. And then I pulled from the Pathways of the Soul Oracle. The first one is joy. So again, it's this, this very feminine energy, but this is a year where the expansion, because that's what pathways into the soul means. It's like, how do I expand? It's about experiencing more joy. If you're like me, <laughs> I've experienced joy, but these last few years has made me kind of like, okay, let me be cautious. <laughs> so I think that joy is going to be more of like breakthrough energy for us. If you want to break through experience joy, that's how I would it, um uh, that's what I would advise. And it says joy breaks the imprint of negative vibrations in your life. So it's truly a power tool. So I thought it interesting that the pathway out of the soul. So if we are struggling in some kind of way, it might would be in terms of addiction. So I love what this author says that it comes in many forms. It's all about how you choose to numb your senses and what prevents you from living with vitality. So that is something that sometimes we have to just get real with ourselves about our addictions. Sometimes addictions are emotional. I think a lot of us have social media addiction. Um, it's, it's something about the way we engage um, online life or maybe even we have some technological addiction, which I think could be even something something that we really have to kind of face and deal with because Pluto is moving into Aquarius. And that is just strengthening the energy of technology, okay? So we just want to be honest with ourselves about where are we dealing with addiction. And addiction is largely something that feels like it's we use it as a way to gain control. I have been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> Still, you know, I, I tell people as a Scorpio and a Pisces, I have both of those energies. Addiction can be real. 
easy for me. Um, so it's no judgment. It's more of just kind of like, what does addiction prevent me from doing? Or how am I using addiction to protect me? And what is it that I, what, how, what am I willing to give this addiction up for in order to experience something new and maybe more pleasant, more desirable, more aligned with my destiny? So that's how I would look at this. Um, let's see here. And then there's the pathway of support. What is going to support us? I love this so much self worth. Now, self worth is important because we have Jupiter in. Um, Taurus right now. That's going to happen until the um, until May of 2024. Even when Jupiter is just about to leave and going to Gemini, it's going to have this amazing meeting with Uranus. So this topic of self worth and even this energy of eight, this is going to be highlighted as a result. Okay, so self worth is one of the ways that we can support and buoy ourselves. And so one of the things that I said here, first and foremost, is self-worth. It needs to be inherent. There's nothing on the outside that gives us worth and value. I'm glad I'm saying this because I really needed to kind of think about something as I say this. And so we all need to be connected with our inherent inner self-worth. And the more we are just operating from that place, we're willing to take risk. We're willing to take action. We're willing to, willing to do things that are challenging because we know it doesn't matter if I fail or succeed. It has no bearing on my worth. It's just, I tried something and it didn't work out. I tried something and it did work out. It's not a reflection on, on my worth and my value. Okay. Your worth, your value. So if you are struggling with self-worth, your mission this year is to open yourself up more to your inherent self-worth. And um, I want to say the best way to do that is by nurturing yourself, really taking good care of yourself. And then the other thing is appreciate yourself. Like say, oh my gosh, I really appreciated the way I did this. Or I appreciated the way I did that. Like nobody else has to even give you this appreciation you don't have to tell anybody that you're appreciating yourself. But every day, write down a couple of things that you appreciate about yourself. And that will help to bring up that inherent self-worth. Now, if you're already experiencing self-worth, then your mission for 2024 is to do the things that scare you from that place of self-worth. All right. So take risk and know that it's not tied to your worth or your value. Okay. I'm getting distracted because my older brother keeps calling. Sometimes I think something is wrong and then it turns out to be okay. So that's what I'm just going to trust. Okay. So, ooh, excuse this typo. Uh, remember that life is a process. So place complete trust in yourself and in that process. Let go of limiting beliefs and identities and embrace the unifying bliss of being in the circle of life. There's just something about that that makes life feel so, so good. So I've given you some animal totems that you can use. I love, love, love animal totems. And I've given you some colors. And the way you can use these is, you know, you can just, you know, maybe you're like, I need some inspiration. Uh, adder is going to help me today. Or metamorphosis is going to help me today. Or maybe, you know, for the month of January, it's metamorphosis. For February, you want to focus on adder and March moose and then you just rinse and repeat. But I just encourage you to um, use these animal totems as inspiration. You can call on them. You know, you can post up a butterfly if you need to and just call in the energy of butterfly and this energy will help you with transformation or adder, which is about healing and transformation and energy and moose, which is about worthiness. And then these are the colors. You remember I told you um, Amen and Arsay, they don't have colors, but one is crystal that you can use because it's all about clarity. I think this is a year where you want to seek clarity, even if that clarity is, I'm just in this moment right here, right now. Okay. Because sometimes clarity isn't about, I know. Sometimes clarity is about, I am just here and I'm available to what's in this moment. All right. 
I also chose golden green for renewal. I think that's a great color for this, um, for 2024. And then I love the energy of Scott, um, the color scarlet, because it's representing energy. It matches that Aries energy, that Ogunda energy that we were talking about, action, all that kind of good stuff. The goddesses that I chose are um, Oshun. The other names are Hathor, Venus, any maiden go goddess, okay? That it's many, many different names for this goddess. But it's because of this um, this energy of joy and self-worth that I think would um, would greatly benefit us here. Having fun and being creative. And then what I want you to ask yourself is what awakens your inner creative juices? What turns you on and lights you up? What brings you joy? These are questions that we want to ask ourselves all year long because this is what will help us to move forward. The next one I pulled was Ashira, and um, she is all about foresight and seeing. I, I pulled, and like all of this is separate. I pulled all these different oracles, but I was like, oh, no, 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 hold on one second. Yes, this one is th that intuition that I've been talking about from so many different oracles, and she offers support and insight. Now, what I want you to know about the goddesses is, is that each one is, resides within you. There is the outer ocean or Ashira or Papa. There, there are the outer ones, you know, the different, the, the greater energy. But the true empowerment comes from understanding each goddess resides within you. You want to tap the ocean within the Venus within, the Ashira within, the Papa within. You want to tap that goddess within you because that is your foresight, okay? So, but this one helps you to, Ashira helps you when you're feeling overwhelmed and you kind of need that strength to keep going so that you don't feel like you're going to buckle, okay? And then Papa, I put Polynesian goddess because I know for us, Papa looks like a man's name, but this is from Polynesia. This is the one that goes with that amen. She's about divine prophet, providence, and she is able to pull support to you from all different realms of the universe. And she will support you in, you know, getting, accessing the wisdom, the knowledge, you know, actually the word Akashic records. It's kind of like the Akashic records is this great universal library. And, and, and so we can access, access that wisdom. A lot of times we feel like, I don't know. That's something I've been training myself out of. I don't know. I'm not going to say I don't know. It's, I haven't figured it out yet. And so I think Papa will help us with that, okay? And she has lots of optimism there also. So again, this, in, this is a year of eight, status, wealth, power, focus on success, making money, material gain. Be unapologetic about it. Be unapolo unapologetic about it because that's just how it is. Astrology, numerology, they're just times when we're more, more focused in that way. And, um, you know, we can do it in a, a way where we have integrity and we're ethical and, you know, it, it's winning for everybody. So let's make those choices also because I know capitalism can make us just not even want to participate. But um, you know, when we have money, we can, you know, get our money circulating amongst ourselves with people who have our same values. And, you know, if people circulate their money to me, they know that some of my, the money that you circulate to me goes towards tuition for my son, you know, so it helps, it makes me feel good if I circulate money to you, cause I know you building your business or you're working on a degree or whatever it is, you know? Or, you know, I take part of my money and I tithe all of it. Every money, all, every penny that comes in, it's going to get tithed on. Um, so be unapologetic about being wealthy, making money, because you're going to do good things with your money. Women, the more money we have, the more wealth we have, the more material gain we have, the better the world is. And this is our time. Um, let's see here. So 2024 is the first year that I actually feel like we're going to feel like this is a normal year, even though I know, you know, I'm going to be looking at what do I really think is going to happen with this um, Pluto return. I know that 2024 is a, a, 
a political year, you know, it, it, a year where we have elections, a major elections. And, um, but right now it feels like everything is about this Pluto return. I feel hopeful because Pluto is going into Aquarius again. And so that is about progress. That is about everybody making progress. We're moving forward, futuristic. Um, but still, no matter what, I feel like this year will feel more normal than what we have felt in the past um, four years. So expect good things to happen and um, be open to receiving, you know, stand in that worthiness and be open to receiving whatever it is that you desire for your life. Even if you get 20% of the way there in 2024, you deserve that and you'll be well on your way. Um, so yes, thank you again so much for being a part of the Inspired Goddess community. I appreciate you all so, so much. And um, yeah, you'll be hearing again from me soon because I have a new video coming out. Who knows in the next week or so. All right, y'all take care. Thank you. And uh, again, happy 2024. Ah, love you. Peace.